You're tuned into Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Tune in right now. What's up, everybody? Hello. Hello. We're live. It's the first episode ever of the Black Instagram long form show. We're on Instagram usually, but now we're bringing it to YouTube. I am one of your hosts, Tyler Simone, and I have a beautiful panel here with me. I'm Lauren Jade and Tyler. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Let's just jump right into it. So, Lauren, how about you start us off with some Black Instagram business news? Okay, guys, I'm so excited. I know we just, I just met them for people working at home, but we family. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited about my top three because two out of the three are also South Side of Chicago natives. Okay. <laughs> so I put that out there. And at number three, we have uh, Michelle Obama, our forever first lady, guys. Ooh, yeah. Love me love some her. Michelle love Obama. Love her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Michelle actually made $36 million last year in 2019 Ooh. from her book Becoming. Uh, which made her the third highest paid author of all of the world in 2019, which is amazing. She sold 10 million oh, no. copies. And now she just announced and Forbes shared in their post that she actually is going to have a documentary. She documented the whole process of her becoming tour and it's all going to be on Netflix coming May 6th. Ooh, I love oh, that. I can't wait for I, that. Cannot I'm wait for that. A little bit of the Obamas. Just know I a little bit of them. I know. I know. We're excited. About 43,000 people like the post, so they're all excited. We're all going to be checking it out on Netflix. We all need something to watch at home, something uplifting. So we'll be watching. Yay. Wait, did you guys read the book? No, I haven't. I you didn't. I've been meaning to, and I haven't. That Wait. is on my list of things to do it's in this quarantine. Have y'all read it? Some of it. Okay. Some of it. It's good, though. I purchased it. Okay. Speaking of deals, uh, number two, Tabitha Brown. I don't know if you guys are familiar with her, if you've seen her on Instagram and TikTok, but she actually is an actress, a vegan influencer, and like an internet auntie. So she's been on the internet basically doing these inspirational videos while she's cooking, giving people little wisdom, nuggets and gems. And it's crazy because she just got on TikTok uh, in March, like early March, she already has 2.3 million followers. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's insane. In a month, it actually, I think she hit that mark. Uh, so now she just signed with CAA or Creative Artist Agency. And yep. Yes. I know. That's insane. That's insane. Man, I'm just funny. I loved her little carrot bacon um, video. She said, like that, like so, because it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I love her. And the craziest, amazing thing about it is CAA is a really well-known agency. So that's yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know her, but I know CAA. So listen, <laughs> that gives her all the, the reputation and credibility that she needs in my book. So now I gotta find it. That's so too. Like, wasn't she, she was on a, recently, I think she was what, on Will and Grace for yeah. the last season. I was like, go ahead, get your, get your little moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's really inspiring because in her post caption, she said that she actually used to work at the Macy's and Century City across from CAA. And she was mm. about it like 15 years ago. Look at that. Wow. It comes full circle. It full does. Circle. Wow. So those will be the best times. <laughs> um, really excited for her, and I'm excited to see what she has cooking up with CAA. Probably a chef show, something mm. on the network. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, stay tuned. Stay tuned for Auntie Tab, y'all. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Auntie okay. Tab. That's cute. And at number one is a Chicago native. Some say he's problematic. Can y'all guys know what I'm talking about? Oh, I think I know. Okay. Yeezy. Yes, Yeezy. I knew uh, it. And yes. <laughs> use the word Yeezy because his Yeezy brand is actually what helped him make news this mm. week. Yeah, and that's his brand took Kanye's music career and his whole wealth to the next level by making him a billionaire. He's that, officially yeah. a billionaire now. Um, <laughs> it's crazy. Honestly, I thought he would have he would have mm -hmm. already surpassed that with the way. I mean, it just looks to the public. It's it looks like he's just been making that money. Yeah, yeah. 
Big facts. Inspiring. And apparently he's actually surpassed, according to this Forbes article, he surpassed uh, Jay-Z. Wow. Yeah, Diddy. He's got more of a net worth. And wow. this is the tea, though. I got to throw some tea in because it's me. We love it. We oh. love it. So it's crazy because actually the Shade Room reposted this story. It was all over Instagram. But the Shade Room shared that Forbes actually said in their article that Kanye was not originally on their billionaires list. That was posted earlier this month. So Kanye called up Forbes and said, why didn't y'all put me on the list? Yeah, hold up. Y'all gonna know I'm making it. <laughs> wow. Okay. wow. Put me on the list. Bad. In fashion. So I believe that definitely happens. Forbes said it did as well. So now Kanye got his own article. So shout wow. out. He pulled shout the Kardashian card on that one. He's gonna call the source himself. You gonna? I'm gonna get my spotlight. They probably right. were like, "Listen, you need to learn how to be with right. right. Okay. You know, you know, Chris got all up in that and was like, "Look, this is what you do. Do you need me to call, <laughs> or you want to do it?" Saying, "Yeah, Chris has all the answers, of course." Hey, but always. <laughs> So before we go any further, Tyler Tyson's going to give us some Black Instagram music news, but I just wanted to let everyone out there know that we appreciate you. We love that you're watching and we want you to stick around. So make sure you subscribe. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure you like, send us a, you know, a good five-star rating and we'll continue to do this. Yeah. Yes. Like Come yes. on and continue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With that being said, Tyler Tyson, any Black Instagram music news? You know, we always got a lot of music news over here. So let's go ahead and jump into it. First things first, number three on my list, Miss Mariah Carey. I mean, so y'all know Mimi is just, everybody loves Mariah Carey. Like I can't think of one person that doesn't love her. And she has, I call it the Mariah Carey effect. She has this way of stuff that she released decades ago coming back and making it to number one. So Mariah just hit number one on iTunes as of two days ago because wow. of her uh, album from 2008, The Emancipation, not The Emancipation, but uh, E equals MC squared, which is basically the second version of The Emancipation of Mimi. It reached number one on iTunes out of the blue. Like no wow. one was checking for it. Like we don't really know how she got back to number one but she's sitting pretty at number one. And she posted this video singing the song Last, uh, Last Kiss. It was an impromptu video. And she also tweeted um, like, what's going on? And then she tweeted a thank you saying, thank you guys so much for everything. So I'm here for it. How are y'all feeling about Mariah? That's honestly beautiful. Honestly, Mariah Carey will never be old though. I mean, even All I Want for Christmas, that song repeat, she gets money just for by that song. And also, you know, and speaking of uh, Mimi, the emancipation of Mimi or not, that's my favorite album. I promise you, I play that anytime, <laughs> anytime. okay? It's a classic, yeah, it's, it's a classic. classic. And like you said, All I Want for Christmas, that reached number one during Christmas <laughs> season for the first time ever. That song had been out for 25 years and reached number one this past Christmas. So I call, that's why I call it the Mariah Carey effect. I don't know anybody that can dig back that far and make a song number one, but she does. She does. TikToks, it's yeah. those TikToks. It's those TikToks. <laughs> those dang TikToks. <laughs> and, and see, Streaming and, during quarantine. That part, that's because yeah. her and Janet Jackson are both seeing a surge. Janet is sitting at number three, thanks to Jade uh, with the right. control. Uh, her, <laughs> her control album is sitting at number three on iTunes. So, I mean, it's something about these classic albums coming back, thanks to TikTok and the challenges. And another artist that is no stranger to these TikTok videos is Meg Thee Stallion. She's my number two this week because of her savage remix <laughs> with the Queen B, Beyonce, which I think it dropped, did that drop today? That dropped, it dropped like, today. today. Yes. Yeah, and it's already, it's already blowing up everywhere. Uh, Meg, wow. of course, posted uh, a post about it and already just within three hours has over 300,000 views. So I'm sure by the end of the day, this will be the top story and will probably be very close to a million likes and views. Um, have y'all heard the, have y'all heard the remix? Uh, some of it, not all of it. Mm -hmm. but Click it on Twitter, y'all, and it was gone. Her team wiped it away. Somebody posted Oh, yeah, they say you're going to pay for that. Oh, oh shoot. In seconds. It's fire. It gives you uh, ten, the twice as a baddie of the first Savage song to make you feel like, okay, you know what B said. I'm a savage, so I'm going to be a savage. Oh, that part, oh like, shoot. Beyonce came and put her own stank on it. You know, I, I'm always here for 
a remix, especially when Beyonce adds her own little twist to things. So I'm not going to get into the lyrics, but y'all just have to go back and listen because B dropped some gems in that lyrics talking about moving one cheek at a time and so on and so forth. So just go check it out for yourself. Do you think the, so because we're in quarantine though, do you think that they'll make, they have to make a video for this. They have to. They and if they do, to. it's not going to be creative. It has to be very creative. And you know, be they, like, also I'm feeling myself version. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. I'm here for sure. all of it. You heard twerk a little bit maybe in a classic way, <laughs> B, you know, we love you, you know. I would love a twerk off. If we could just have a twerk off from the two. Oh. Mm. Oh. And Houston mm. hotties too. Ah, they need to create a whole new challenge just for those two and then everybody just fall in line. Okay, and then my last story, number one on my list, I mean, it was just over a week ago, uh, Babyface and Teddy Riley, OG producers and writers in the game. I have so much love and respect for both of these brothers. They came through and broke Instagram with 4 million people tuning into their live stream. Obviously the most people tuned in to any live stream ever in the history of Instagram. The record was originally held by Drake and um, Tory Lanez. They had over 300,000 people, but as you see, Babyface and Teddy Riley just blew them out of the water. Um, I was there. It was like a uh, virtual Woodstock, if you would, because it was just love and happiness and peace and just a good time across the board. So that's my number one. Did y'all check out the battle? Were y'all in in the room with me with Mariah and everybody else? I was with you. I was there. <laughs> there we go. Oh, come on. We might have just met today, but we was jamming <laughs> last week. <laughs> Together. <laughs> Together. You you know what? I sadly, I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I just remember I was busy and then I got on Instagram and all I saw was something about Ted Riley. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but everybody else knows and I don't. But I found out yeah. uh, eventually. Well, Lauren and I were in the building and it was <laughs> fire. I just remember you texting us in the group saying, you yes. watch it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> <I did not. laughs> Okay, thank you, Tyler, for those um, amazing stories. Okay, so I guess I'll go next. Um, we have the top three beauty segments or stories of the week. So number three is that Lizzo revealed that she's been battling with, with self-hatred. And um, she posted a video in lingerie, which is nothing new. We know Lizzo is really comfortable with herself. And I really like that she mentioned this because a lot of people now are dealing with mental illness and she just made sure to send us some love and to remind us to love ourselves and maybe focus on a body part that we don't really love that much, but to just give it some love anyway. Um, so how do you guys feel about Lizzo and just how comfortable she is being open about herself I think it's um I'll say something it, um I thought it was funny so I was I actually met Lizzo yeah. and it was so interesting because um it was a work we weren't, we weren't hanging out like that it was a work situation but it was just interesting to me because she was so shy but like how she presents herself to be you wouldn't have thought that so the fact that she shared that she is battling with this self-hatred or or she was battling with it it's interesting because she presents such a confident, you know, persona, which I'm sure she has become that as well. But I don't know. I just think that's interesting. I think it's really vulnerable for her to share. But it makes more sense now that I've seen like, oh, she has layers. We're all onions. Everybody has layers. Yep. You, know, you can twerk yeah. in a thong, but also, you know, still feel a little down sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And I appreciate her for that. Yeah, I think it's interesting that you bring that up because I find that in different interviews that I watch uh, with celebrities, they talk about the fact that they are really shy, but their music is is kind of for themselves. So I'm sure over time with her own music, it's kind of helped her break out of that. You know, I um, agree with you, Tyler, because mm -hmm. that's exactly what it is. And I was going to actually say that, that pretty much I feel like their music is not, they just so happen to sound good to the point where people are like, oh my gosh, I love it. But really they're doing it for themselves. Like just like recently Ari Lennox posted a picture of herself from a throwback and she literally was like, you know, I miss being this person, all that stuff. And like her music was really just about what she just loved to put out and she just so happened to become famous so i think that majority of the time these celebs don't even try to even be in the position that they are in so it just sucks that the society is so harsh when it comes to you know judgment yeah and i, I love that she uh talked about it just because whether you're whatever size you are whether you're plus size or 
slim or whatever, everybody hates something about their body. So I feel like it's the same. We're all battling the same thing, which is trying to love and appreciate self. So I just love the fact that she acknowledged it and, and put it on Front Street. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that post was liked more than 900,000 times, by the way, which that's a lot of people seeing you in lingerie, but I would do it. I was still I'm there for you. No, I'll do it. <laughs> I know you would do it. That was your arm. You Where's Jay Lamar? Right. <laughs> okay, so our number two top beauty post of the week was a post that Oprah shared of Stedman. And Stedman, we don't really see him that often. Uh, so I was really happy to see him, but he was cutting hair and he was cutting Tando's hair, which is Oprah's daughter. And I was thinking, I don't know if I would let Stedman cut my hair if he's never cut hair before, because that was a part mm. of it. He's never done it. But it turned out good. Well, listen, I, that's the hobby good. I picked up. I told y'all, while I'm in quarantine, my barber might not be able to come, but I have picked up clippers, and I have been cutting my hair. I did a Ooh. fresh cut right before this, so I'm here for it. All new things in quarantine, so if you pick up clippers or whatever, Learn a trade, learn a skill. We might as well do something while we're locked away. Right. Especially if we're going to have to be on camera. You know, we got to just that fix part. it ourselves. Mm -hmm. No other choice. Um, and then the top beauty post of the week was Halle Berry revealing an ageless beauty secret, which a lot of people are happy to finally get. She was telling us that basically her um, one of her go-to face masks only consists of four different ingredients, and you only leave it on for about 10 minutes, and it's homemade. So mm -hmm. we finally got a skin secret to look more like Halle. Where is my pen? What are the four <laughs> secrets so I can write these down? Oh, man. You know what? Let me grab them for you really quick. Because I need every little <laughs> bit I can get to try to keep it all together and keep it tight and keep it right. So that, that when this quarantine is over, I can come back out and, you know. Send it to listen, me. I got to I know. Get at this point, we got to have some kids running around. It could be the end of the world. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. Thank God for this skin secret. Um, okay, that's it for me. Jade, you want to give us your top three Black Instagram fashion posts of the week? Yes, let's do it. So, you know, I know that we're over here in quarantine, you know, not really doing much. You know, we're in our sweats and all that. But we do have some celebs that are posting pictures that are throwbacks or what they're doing in their backyard and everything. So the first one that I wanted to do was going to be is going to be Jordan Woods. Uh, she recently just posted a picture of her in her bathing suit with a matching do rag. And honestly, her body is looking right. She's been working out consistently, and this reached over about five hundred thousand likes. Now you know she just started becoming like the social media star, so like you know she's definitely attracting a lot of attention. And so with that platform, she's definitely also promoting her new fashion brand, her new uh, brand called First Place. And pretty much First Place is a brand where you can watch her home workouts or gym workouts. Um, and it's a pretty good cost. It's not too much. It's actually like around $30 just to have her own workout plan. And also she sells resistance bands. And I feel like, you know, we over here trying to get the booty and the legs right. So resistance <laughs> bands are so important. Um, and, you know, I just really love that she's being like really open with her and getting out of her shell, you know, because we didn't really know much about her, you know, in the Kardashian time. So now that she's in her out of her own in her own shell and doing her own thing, you know, she's really showing her, you know, her creates her creative skills and what she really has her talents. No, yeah, never. we're definitely getting to see her and know her a lot more. Sorry, Lauren. Oh, no, I was just saying she's putting herself first place now. Like she's like kind exactly. of into her own light. I love it. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, I do it. I just love, I lo I just fashion. And I love a redemption story because, you know, people had thrown her away based on everything that, that had happened uh, last year. But I love to see her just kind of come back and, and kill it on her own. Oh, yeah. And so speaking of killing it, though, OK, this girl always kills it. She always showing her body. She always, you know, showing how she working it. And this is going to be Meg the Stallion. And she is over here rocking this ponytail, okay? This long ponytail talking about how she's just gonna stick to that for now on. And she's wearing an Alexander Wang dress with a long sleeve, slim tight, short mid like dress. 
it looks so good to the point where it's just like, okay, are you really in quarantine or are you so you look like Loki have like a secret club that nobody knows about? Because <laughs> bomb, okay. And with that being said, you know, I already know that Tyler mentioned this, but she just released, you know, that new single savage remix with beyonce sounds amazing sounds great and i just really hope that you know she comes out with new music do you think that she's probably working on more music during quarantine oh yeah. absolutely i yeah. do you know how beautiful this 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 woman is is stunning like her face is stunningly beautiful like with or without makeup long hair ponytail natural hair whatever she's actually a really 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 beautiful girl she a had you lady. remind me of queen she kind of reminds you of like Queen Latifah at yeah. times with certain hair. She kind of gives you like Jennifer Hudson vibes at times. Like she's just a stunningly beautiful woman. And shout out to Marcus Terry, who's in the chat uh, watching from Virginia. Hello. Hey. Um, and so our last one is going to be Miss Cardi B. Okay, this girl, we have not seen anything or heard anything really a lot lately in, in a while, but you know, she's showing that she could be comfortable and just, you know, show that she's doing well. I see that her wigs are, you know, as nice and laid always, you know, always different colors. Uh, she's wearing a bralette, a white bralette, and it's gonna be with a matching, like glossy biker shorts in a way. And she's like taking a picture in her photos. And just because like we haven't really heard music from her, because I think the last song was Press, um, she is definitely um, trying to make sure that everyone is aware of the coronavirus by talking to Bernie Sanders. Um, she was on live with him, I think like a week ago, just talking to him about what's been going on. And the fact that Cardi can really say, she knows she doesn't sound, um, politically literate but she still knows what's going on and what's up and i think that's also very important because there's a lot of people who aren't politically um literate about things so the way that she talks it allows us to really understand and get what's going on yeah i, I agree. agree i love like you know i love politics <clears throat> that's like my second favorite thing outside of music um and like you said everyone doesn't have to speak the exact same way everyone doesn't have to come from a background of politics like po the great thing about politics because it's about this country and and the world everyone is included regardless of your background so you just come to the table as you are and you bring forth the issues that you want to bring forth and you speak how you speak and cardi is to me the poster child for oh, yeah. being who you are at all times yeah, I agree with you. And honestly, I think that I take news a lot better when it's coming from someone that I actually understand, especially when it comes to politics, because sometimes the minute I hear politic talk, I tune out because I can't <laughs> right. understand what they're talking about. So yeah. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah, for sure. What about you, Lauren? What do you think? I love pretty much everything Cardi does. And I love <laughs> <laughs> I think she again, she's like you to speak to both the Tyler's points, she's making people feel like they have, uh, they can have a voice in it too. Cause I think a lot of times people think if I don't have the same vernacular as this person, I don't even have a place to speak, but she's saying, no, this affects you too. So I'm going to speak out about it. And not only that, I'm going to say it in a way that you can understand it. So I think that's a great use of her platform. I respect her for doing that. And with that being said, she literally earned with that, just that one comfortable picture, she got over like 3,200,000 likes, y'all. Just for this chill fit. That's how much I feel like Cardi has a big impact when it comes to her music and also just how she is in general as a person. For sure. Agreed. Yeah, her career has definitely taken off. Oh, yeah. Can okay. I, just, I don't know if we have time and I don't know if I can do this, but can we just, just for a second, just to be shady for a minute, uh, <laughs> Cardi, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, like, you know, Nicki has been quiet also. I really have heard nothing from her. Are we <laughs> like beyond Nikki at this point? Is she coming back? Are y'all looking for her? Like, or what? Well, okay. apparently Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj are about to have a remix for Say So. So Nikki is in the works. I feel like she's just chilling, but I think she acts like she's not doing anything, but she low-key has things up her sleeve for sure. Okay. I am not like checking for her. Lauren out loud. Jade. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at Miming Official, M A I M I N G Official. If also you want to get mindful with your Mondays, go ahead and check me out. Come on, with your right. Mondays. Off. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> you can follow me on all social media at The Tyler Tyson. Yes. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week. <laughs>
On behalf of our BHL staff, we would like to thank you for tuning in to Black Hollywood Live, the world's first digital broadcast network devoted entirely to urban entertainment and pop culture. Check out our Black Hollywood Live YouTube page for even more great programming and amazing content. And be sure to subscribe and like our channel when you do. I'm your BHL host, Nakia Monet, and you can find me on all social media at Kiki Boom Boom or at Black Hollywood Live. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood Redefined.